I remember the first time I ever played Battletoads on the NES. I love the over-the-top animations, the ingenuity of the first boss fight, and how cool the vertical descent was on level 2. And then came level 3, and this happened. As most of us found out, Battletoads is one of the most difficult games of all time, and it's in part responsible for the term Nintendo Hard, which is a reference to the insane difficulty that was found in so many Nintendo games of old. Like most of us, I got pretty far into the game, but I never did beat Battletoads as a kid. However, that changed recently, and it's thanks to many of the advanced features that modern emulators now use, including save states. The nice thing about RetroArch is that it makes it incredibly easy to assign these features to hotkeys for convenient access. So in part two of this RetroArch tutorial, we'll take a brief look at what these hotkeys can do and how you can configure them so that you can finally get the upper hand on those impossible games of yesteryear. As our turtle friends would say, Let's kick shell! Here we are in the main menu of RetroArch. We're going to do most of our work by going to Settings, and then Input. And as usual, there are a ton of options here that could be very confusing. But let's not worry about that for now. We're simply going to scroll down until we get to port 1 controls. Here we can set up a gamepad for player 1. If you have a DualShock or Xbox controller, you're in luck because RetroArch will auto configure it for you. If your controller is not auto configured, we're going to need to configure it manually. To do that, we want to go into the device index and make sure that our controller is selected. Once we've done that, we can map our buttons in one of two ways. The first way is individually, where we select a specific controller function, like we're doing here, and then map it to your gamepad like so. The second way is we can select this option here, set all controls. And this will run through a series of prompts that will allow us to map all of the controller functions in one shot. Now if at some point we mess up and we need to start over, we can simply select reset to default controls. And just like the name sounds, this is going to set all the controls back to their defaults so we can start over. Once all the controls are set, there's one more option I want you to be aware of. It's this one here at the top, analog to digital type. This option allows you to use both the digital pad and the analog stick, if your gamepad has one, to control movement in a game. Let me show you exactly how that works. So here you can see in this totally tubular game, if I move my digital controller around, I'll move, but with the analog, I will not. So I'm going to go into the settings menu. I'm going to come in here to input port 1 controls, and I'm going to change analog to digital to left analog. And now when I resume the game, you'll see that I can now use the left analog to move and the digital will also move. The right analog, no movement. So if I go back in here to settings and go to input, again port 1 controls, and now I'm going to change it to right analog and guess what's going to happen? As I resume the game, left analog no longer moves but right analog will move the same as the digital or d-pad will move. So that gives you an idea of how the analog to digital setting works. Really it's up to personal preference as to whether or not you want to use it. 
Now let's dive into the meat and potatoes, the main course that is hotkeys. So to get there from the main menu, we'll select settings, input, and then hotkeys. Now assigning a hotkey is the same as assigning a button manually that we did earlier in the controller configuration. You select a hotkey command, then you press the key that you want assigned to that hotkey. If you don't want any button assigned to a hotkey, it took me forever to figure this out, and so this is invaluable. Maybe you're smarter than I am and already have figured it out, but you simply hover over that item and hit delete on your keyboard, and that will unbind that hotkey. So, as always, there's a ton of options here. I'm not gonna cover every single one, just those that you're definitely gonna wanna use and take advantage of. So the first setting that I recommend is the hotkey enable setting. By setting this option, whenever you wanna use a hotkey, you're first gonna press the enable hotkey button that you assign. This essentially doubles the number of usable buttons on your controller. And you'll see why that's important in just a moment when I give a little demonstration. But I like to set this hotkey to my PlayStation Home button on my controller. If you have an Xbox controller, you could also assign it to the Xbox Home button. But depending on how your system is set up, that might bring up the Windows game bar. So you'll want to disable that feature in Windows if you're going to use the Xbox Home button as your enable hotkey. If your controller doesn't have a Home button or RetroArch just refuses to recognize it, you can also use the Select button on your controller as a second option for the enable hotkey button. The next hotkey that I re recommend setting is the menu toggle button. Now what this does is brings up the RetroArch menu. I like to set this to the triangle button on my DualShock controller or what would be the Y button on the Xbox controller. I like to have this set just because I don't always want to reach for my keyboard and press the F1 key when uh, I want to reach the RetroArch menu. The next option or hotkey I like to set is the fast forward toggle hotkey. I assign this to the circle button on my DualShock or what would be the B button on an Xbox controller. Now when this hotkey is pressed, it's going to speed up emulation, which is great for running through long cutscenes that can't be skipped. This fast forward is a toggle, meaning that you press the button once to turn on fast forward and then you press it again to turn off fast forward. Now that's different from the next hotkey I recommend, recommend, which is fast forward hold. I like to assign this to the right direction on the right analog stick. Now this is similar to fast forward toggle, the difference being that fast forward will only remain active while you press the hotkey. Now this is great for just short bursts of fast forward. Uh, a good example is when you're playing a game that has an auto scrolling level and there's parts where there's not a lot going on and you just want to kind of jump quickly through parts of that level. You can use the fast forward hold to do that very quickly and efficiently. The next talk key I recommend is the slow motion toggle and it acts just like the fast forward toggle. Instead, though, it slows emulation down. And this is great for navigating parts of a game that require the superhuman reflexes of youth that your decrepit breaking down body just doesn't have anymore. And I'm speaking of myself, obviously. But I like to set this to the X button on my DualShock controller or what would be the A button on an Xbox controller. Next we have the rewind hotkey that I like to enable. This is such a super cool feature. It allows you to rewind emulation back to a previous point in time. 
So I like to set this to the left direction on the right analog stick. However, before this hotkey will work, we have to turn on the feature in RetroArch. So to do that, we go back out to the main menu. We go to settings. This time we're going to go to frame throttle and then rewind and we turn rewind support on and now we'll be able to use the rewind feature. Now let's go back into uh, our hotkeys. The next one we're going to enable is the load save state hotkey and this hotkey just as it sounds I think we're probably all familiar with this feature if you've had any experience in emulation it allows you to load a previously saved state and I like to set this to R2 on my controller. Next we have the save state hotkey and just like it sounds this hotkey creates a save state. I set this to L2 on my controller. Now we have the next save state hotkey. Basically this is just going to cycle forward through the available save state slots. I like to set this to the R1 button. And then the next hotkey, previous save state slot. This cycles backwards through the available save state slots and I like to set this to the L1 button. So now we have all the most useful hotkeys as far as I'm concerned assigned. And here's just a quick visual of what my controller looks like when I have all the hotkeys configured. So now I'm going to give you a brief demonstration of how these hotkeys work as we enjoy this relaxing space exploration simulator. I'm going to start by using the toggle fast forward hotkey. Normally this is uh, an unskippable cutscene that takes forever, but it moves a little bit faster here with fast forward enabled. So now I disable the fast forward toggle and let me show you some of these other hotkeys. First of all the open menu hotkey. Now I'm going to create a save state and go down here and I'll load back up. Pretty cool. I'm going to use the rewind feature to get back to the same spot I was before. Now I'm going to go into the next room and switch to the next save state slot. Make a save state here. And now I can load back to where I was. Or if I switch back to the previous save state, I can load back to that save state too. That's excellent for when you start a new level and maybe you'd like to create a save state for that particular level so that you can practice. Here I've toggled the slow motion feature. You can see how that works. And now I'm going to jump ahead here and use the fast forward hold. Sometimes you just need to jump ahead a little bit in the game and this will allow you to do that. Well. That just about wraps up this tutorial. Please keep in mind that how I set up my hotkeys is by no means a definitive way to do it. But hopefully this has helped give you a basic overview of how you can use some of these functions to their fullest. And most important, play around, experiment, and have fun. Part 3 of this RetroArch Made Easy tutorial will soon be on the way, and I hope you'll be able to join us. Until then, happy gaming!